Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at using the event bridge scheduler on AWS to schedule some Lambda functions using the CDK and TypeScript. Let's get into it. So what actually is the event bridge scheduler? The event bridge scheduler is a new feature that was added to event bridge by AWS late last year in November 2022 time. And since it was added late last year, it's allowed us to easily create one-off and recurring schedules like we could previously do with cron jobs, as well as using something like Dynamo TTL. So this new event bridge scheduler replaces both of those and makes it a lot easier for us to create those one-off and recurring schedules, both through the CDK and the SDK. So in summary, the new AWS event bridge scheduler is a much nicer and cleaner way of creating one-off and recurring schedules to invoke other AWS services. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and let's use the CDK to create some schedules to trigger Lambda functions for us. So to get started, use either an existing CDK project or create a new one such as I have here. The first thing we'll want to do is define two Lambda functions. One will be a recurring one that we can trigger on a recurring schedule. One will be a one-off one that we can trigger on a one-off schedule. So let's start by defining those in our stack. First thing we'll want to do is create a new resources folder. This is what will we'll contain our Lambda functions. So in there we're gonna create our first one, which is gonna be called one-off for the one-off schedule. Inside that it's gonna be a very basic um, Lambda function that just console logs one off so we can tell that one has ran. And then as you can probably guess, we're gonna create another one called recurring. And then we're just gonna do the exact same, but instead of console logging one off, we're gonna want console log recurring. So that's our two Lambda functions. So let's go back into our stack definition file and let's define our Lambda functions that we just wrote. The first one we're gonna do is our recurring Lambda. So let's just start by typing now, const recurring Lambda equals new, and we're gonna new Node.js function. And then we're going to pass in this recurring lambda, and then we're going to open up the options. The first option we're going to pass in is the entry point, which is going to be dot slash resources slash recurring dot ts. Then we're going to pass in handler and handler, as that's what the function is called in here. We are then going to pass in our runtime, which is going to be node.js, I'm sorry, runtime dot node.js, and we're gonna use 16 for this. We're then gonna define our timeout, which is just gonna be a duration of 10 seconds. So with our recurring lambda now defined, let's just copy this and then use this as a base to write our one-off lambda. So we're just gonna change recurring lambda to one-off lambda, uh, change this to one-off lambda as well, and then finally change the entry path to one-off. This then completes the definition of our two Lambda functions. So if our two Lambda functions are now defined, we now need to define a new IAM role, which will have a policy on it, which allows it to invoke Lambda functions. The reason for this is when we define the event bridge scheduler later on in the video, we have to pass an IAM role to run on the schedule. So what we need to do is to give it an IAM role, which can invoke Lambda functions so that it has the necessary permissions to trigger the Lambda functions when it is when it invokes them. So underneath the Lambda functions that we just defined, let's do const scheduler role. And then we're gonna do new role. I'm gonna pass in this scheduler role. And then we're gonna pass in one option to it, which is going to be assumed by. And then we're not gonna do uh, events.amazon Amazon AWS, we're gonna do scheduler Amazon AWS.com and then import service principle and import role. So this creates the base IAM role that we're going to be using to add the policy to, which will then pass through to the scheduler later on, as I mentioned. So the next step after defining our role is to create the policy. So we're gonna do const invoke lambda policy equals new policy. And then we're gonna pass in this and call it invoke lambda policy. And then inside here, we're gonna do document new policy document. And then again, we're gonna pass in some more options to it. So the first one's gonna be statements, which is a new array with new policy statement. And again, more options to it, which is gonna be action, actions, lambda, invoke function. And then it's gonna be the two resources, which is the two functions that we created earlier. We pass in their ARNs. And then we do effect, effect allow. So let's just import everything that we need to import here. And with everything now imported, we've now completed the policy as well as the role. 
The next thing we need to do to finish off our role is to attach that policy to the role that we just created. So underneath the policy, we're going to do scheduler role dot attach inline policy. And then we're going to pass in the invoke lambda policy. Like that. So now we have a role which has a policy attached to it, which allows it to invoke lambdas, specifically the two lambdas that we created at the start of this tutorial. So we're now ready to actually define the schedules for these lambda functions. So to get started, we're going to do a new CFN resource. We're then going to pass in this and then call it a one off schedule. So this will be the schedule which triggers our one off lambda. We're then going to pass in a few different options to it. So the type is going to be AWS and then scheduler and schedule like so. We're then going to define some properties for this schedule. So then we're going to pass them in here. And let's just go through these quickly. We define a name for it, which is one off schedule. We then define a description for it so that comes up in the AWS dashboard so we can understand what it's doing. We then say we're not using the flexible time window. We then pass in our target, which is the one-off lambda function our IRN. And we pass in the ARN for the IM role that we just created earlier. And that is our one-off schedule. So we're actually going to do a very similar definition for the recurring schedule. So I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to change it to recurring schedule. The description will then become run a schedule for every five minutes. And then we're gonna change this schedule expression that instead of being the app property, we're then gonna use the cron property. This cron job then specifies to trigger every five minutes. And then finally, we're gonna change the one-off lambda to recurring lambda. So that completes our definition of our stack and our two schedules. So to now push this up to AWS, open up your terminal and then do a CDK deploy accept any prompts that this gives you. And then we'll wait for that and it will deploy to AWS and then we'll come back and check out our dashboard where we can see the schedules that have been defined. So our CDK stack has just finished deploying and we've waited for our schedules to run. So let's now check them out on AWS's dashboard and let's see how they did. So you can see here under the event bridge page under schedules, we have our two schedules. We have the recurring schedule and the one-off schedule. If you click on them, you can see when the next schedule to run. So this is the recurring schedule doing every five minutes. You can see that it's triggered to run at five past, 10 past, 15 past. Um, and then if we go back and we go to the one-off schedule, you can see that it was triggered to run today at nine o'clock. So with that covered, let's jump over to CloudWatch and let's look at the Lambda logs. So you can see here under log groups, we have two. We have one for the one-off Lambda and one for the recurring Lambda. If we go into the one-off lambda, then we go into the log stream for it, you can see here it logged one off at just past nine o'clock, which is when it was scheduled to run. If we then go back to our recurring lambda, we have one log stream again, but you can see here it's run recurring four times at every five minutes up to the current time, which is exactly what we expected to see. So to recap, we've covered what the event bridge scheduler is in AWS, as well as how we can use the CDK to deploy custom schedules to AWS to invoke AWS services like Lambda function. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and if you'd like to see the full example project for this, make sure to check out the GitHub linked down below, which contains all of the code for this, as well as the blog post, which has got the full write-up of this, along with code snippets that you can copy and follow along with. So until next time, thank you for watching.